It is the Royal Rumble Fallout show, and you know, we were kind of all waiting for SmackDown because the bloodline, you know, the bloodline's the draw these days. But it is the 4th of February 2023. We are on the road to WrestleMania. It is WrestleMania season, as uh, Roman Reigns like to um, point out, with his council. But let's get stuck in to the actual review of the show, and there uh, I. We kick off, well, I mean, say we kick off, this is the order I watch the clips in, I mean, the actual show order could be um, anything, but we get Braun Strowman and Ricochet taking on Imperium, um, and of course, whoever won this match, because this was the, the tag title contender tournament, or whatever weird name they were given to it, would uh, earn the right to challenge the Usos, and Braun Strowman and Ricochet won, I, I don't get this partnership, Braun Strowman, right? It's weird, like, he was released, I mean, a fanter, and they've brought him back, right, and therefore, he's still technically, you've brought back a guy who was a main fanter when you released him, and it wasn't even that long ago, it's not like they released him in 1999 and they brought him back now, you know, I mean, it was like a year ago when they brought him back, um, but, again, just very, very fucking weird here that Braun Strowman and Ricochet are a tag team, and they win, so next Friday it is going to be these two taking on the Usos, but... I mean, I'd say the most interesting thing about this is the fact of will the Usos be there next week? Or should I say, will Jay Uso be there next week? Because we cut backstage. Roman Reigns is basically saying about what the hell's going on. Where's Jay? I could understand if he just walked out. But no show at such a delicate time like this. He asked Jimmy, he's like, where the fuck's Jay? Where is he, Jimmy? Where's Jay Uso? And he's like, don't know, Uso. If he was going to speak to someone, he'd speak to me, Uso. And then he, he asks Solo, and before Solo can say anything, Jimmy quickly shuts it down and says, if he was going to speak to anyone, he'd speak to me, basically repeating what he said. The range is like, it's a very delicate time. We're a family. We stick together. And I thought when he was on a bit, when he was like, he'd, only, he'd speak to me before anyone, Rain's going to be like under his breath. <laughs> What about that ginger bastard, Sammy C? And then, yeah, Roman Reigns heads out to the ring. Basically, after, you know, he's told Solo and Jimmy to fuck off, essentially, is basically what he's done. Um, he goes out to the ring, starts berating Sammy C and Kevin Owens, basically saying, he's the man, this is my time. And then who, what happens? It comes Sammy C and Sammy C lays... The smack down to Roman, but then Roman quickly gets the upper hand. He's battering Sami Zayn. And out of nowhere, like, Sami Zayn hits a spear and Roman manages to roll out the ring. And I believe this was all the one segment. There is stuff that happens after this, but I'll get to that later on. This was the order I watched the clips. So, yeah, a bit of a messy thing. But you know what? I, you know, All the Bloodline stuff up to this point, it's been good. It's been good. It's carried the show. It's bit definitely been the best stuff of the week. We then have Charlotte Flair taking on Sonya to fill. Right. Like, I don't know how Sonya to fill could ever dream of beating Charlotte Flair, but it, it, it's not going to happen. Like this, like, it's just never going to happen. Heal Charlotte against face Sonya Deville. I mean, you could argue there's maybe more chance it happened in this way than rather if Charlotte was the face and Sonya was the heel. But again, just never going to see it happen. And I, no, I, don't, I just don't care about Charlotte. I honestly don't. Her face is plastic. Sonya Deville has came on leaps and bounds in recent years. Why not give Sonya Deville the belt? You know, and she's pretty hard, damn it. But yeah, she taps it. In the uh, the figure eight leg lock, bang bang, good night. That's another W in that column for Charlotte Flair again. Do we want Charlotte Flair to win? No, of course we don't. But man, that's just the way it happens. And then we have the Viking Raiders taking on the brawling brutes. And again, like is is McIntyre in the brawling brutes because? This match is basically only happened because Ridge Holland and Butch request it because they well, I'll be it, right, Seamus is the leader, but like why not just put McIntyre in this faction? You can maybe change the name up a wee bit. You know, like the Brawling Brutes is a shite name. Like I think the Celtic Connection would be a good name. But then again, Drew McIntyre supports Rangers. Would he have a problem with that? Maybe. Maybe he would. But uh, yeah. 
bloody brilliant. It is, isn't it? But it's not really. But the Viking Raiders defeat the Brawling Brutes here. I mean, pretty cookie card, despite the fact they are in the match. But then, who appeared after? It was McIntyre and Sheamus running down to the ring. Absolute massive brawl here uh, between the two... Well, I see the two, the two teams, the, the, the four Goliaths, man. We've got two big Vikings and we've the two big Celtics. It was like the, it was like the early 1200s all over again. Vikings taking them on, man. Brilliant. And then we uh, have the Fatal 4 match to earn the right to compete in the Elimination Chamber match for a Raw Women's Title Opportunity at Mania. Again, like, why? It's just, I, it's just a mess, isn't it? Like, because SmackDown... It's already had its title, you know, chosen for me. Any Ripley's did that to pick Charlotte. You're sitting here with um, Natalia winning a match on SmackDown to qualify for a Raw Chamber match. It, it, I think stuff like that's stupid. And I mean, at least, at least when Rhodes, right? Rhodes is challenging Roman Reigns for the title at Mania, but essentially what he's doing is challenging the. He, he, He's saying, well, he has, there's only the two belts. You have to compete against whoever's the champion. But, you know, that's what he's doing back in the day. He'd be like, I'm going for the World Heavyweight Championship match, right? Well, Rhea Ripley's just openly come out and said she wants Charlotte Flair. Which then automatically makes you believe that, well, there's no chance Charlotte... I mean, Charlotte Flair's not losing up to Mania anyway, right? But see, back in the day when someone won a match, like the Rumble, they didn't come out and challenge the person. You know, they came out and challenged the fact that they had the belt and the person with it. And then it would be a, I don't care who's... If you've got the belt or you've got the belt, say the match, you know, going up to the Peter Fuse, no way out. You know, I, I don't care if it's The Rock or Hogan, just for example, that match never happened for the belt, but you get me, you know, like Austin would be like, I don't care if it's The Rock or Hogan, I'm going for the belt, I'll whip your ass or I'll whip the Brahma Bulls ass. You know, like the fact we really said, that just means every match that Charlotte Flair's going to have up in the mania, she's not going to lose and it's just going to be absolutely... um. Garbage, in my opinion, but yeah, Natalia wins this match. Pfft, absolute mess. She, she's uh, going to compete with Liv Morgan, Asuka, Raquel Rodriguez, and Nikki Cross, and there's still another one to be determined. But then we have another, like, Sammy, uh, I know Cody Rhodes, like, promo package, but uh, he's going to be the guy to take on Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Yeah, just basically showing his comeback here, and then a few more stuff. So we, we did get this thing with Dominic and Ray having a race. Um, with the cars at the NASCAR hang, which was actually entertaining like their interactions have pretty good like where you got arrested and then you know we actually just beat him up but we then have our uh, main event segment essentially which is the state of the bloodline I've already addressed half of what Roman Reigns goes out of the ring but then Sami Zayn takes to the mic and he says you know what Roman I, I didn't take stuff for you, I didn't demand stuff, but now I'm asking, I'm wanting, this is the thing I wanted, I didn't want anything in the bloodline, it was a family, Roman, but there is one thing I want now, Roman's like, what? Sami Zayn's like, I want you, in a title match, an elimination chamber, I mean, I feel sorry for saying, because, yeah, he is getting a title match here, and he's getting a big match against Roman Reigns, but, it probably should be the Mania match, and I'm, that's no disrespect to Cody Rhodes, but, I mean, the crowd, this was like, this felt like an old segment, you know, like like most of these Bloodline segments do, feel like the crowd's so into them, especially with Sami Zayn, and, you know, this was brilliant, Reigns kind of just looking at him, but then out of nowhere, out comes Jimmy Uso and Solo Sakai, they beat him up, then out comes Roman Reigns, they beat up Sami Zayn, but who, where, where is Jey Uso, that is the big question, is he going to, side with Sami Zayn, I doubt it, but then Roman Reigns basically bars him, puts Sami Zayn in the corner, says, this is easy for me, this is reality, this is your dream that I live, Sami, and then he starts screaming ballistic at me, grabs him, he's like almost fucking licking his scalp, he's like, yeah, Sami, this is my reality, big man, you're gonna take it for me, I'm your tribal chief, you fucking remember that, Sami Zayn, you absolute bam, and that is how the show goes off the air, the bloodline stuff, it was, it was good. It was actually, I mean, I can't remember the last time I've actually said stuff in wrestling has been good slash great. I enjoyed all of this, right? Enjoyed the segments. Paid attention to the segments. Normally you put the, the match on or the, the segments and you're falling asleep on the pillar. But this was good, right? 
And the show, I mean, Natalia in a match win and Charlotte in a match win and the other matches. But I mean, apart from the Bloodline stuff, it was awful. But the Bloodline stuff was good and there was three Bloodline segments essentially. So I'm going to give the show a 3 out of 10, which is the highest show of the week. But then again, Rampage is still to go. Is Rampage going to dethrone SmackDown? I wouldn't have bet my top rocker on it, guys. But anyway, leave your thoughts down below. And until next time, peace.